everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Doodling Through Education. Today, we are going to be talking about our sun. We are going to be answering the questions, why is the sun important? What are the different parts of the sun? And what makes them different? So stay tuned and we will discuss just that. So get comfortable, snuggle in, and let's get started. Go outside on a clear night and look up in the sky. What would you see? Stars. All those little pinpoints of light in the sky are usually stars. We can see about 5,000 to 9,000 stars in the sky of the billions of stars in our gal galaxy. That's right, billions. Now some of those little star looking objects are actually the sun reflecting off planets, but the vast majority of them are stars. And you know what else is a star? Our sun in our solar system. So how is a star formed? Stars are formed when gravity pulls gas and dust all together as more and more of this gas and dust get pulled together. Friction from the dust rubbing against each other makes this mass start to heat up. When it gets hot enough, it goes through a nuclear reaction that makes the sun start to shine. Now, when you look at the stars, do you notice that some stars seem brighter than others? There are two factors that go into this. Bigger stars are indeed brighter than smaller stars. But stars closer to us also appear brighter than those that are farther away. The brightness of a star is called its luminosity. Another important fact is when you see stars in the sky, you may notice that they seem to twinkle, hence the cute nursery rhyme that we all know and love. But they actually shine a steady light, and in fact, when viewed from space, the stars don't twinkle at all. So why do they twinkle here on Earth? This is due to the Earth's atmosphere. The lights from these stars have to travel through the thick moving layers of the Earth's atmosphere before we see it. This bends the light in many directions before we see it with our eyes, hence the twinkling. Now let's jump back to talking about our star, the Sun. The Sun is extremely important to life here on Earth. It drives the weather, the seasons, the climate, the currents, and makes it possible for plants to complete photosynthesis. Simply put, if the sun did not exist, neither would we. It is certain that God knew exactly what he was doing when he placed our planet where it is in our solar system in relationship to the sun. So what are the different parts of the sun and how are they distinguished? The first part of the sun is the core. The core is at the center of the sun and it is the hottest region. It is also where nuclear fusion reactions happen. That Those are those reactions that we were talking about earlier. This powers the whole of the sun. Essentially, the inner core is the engine of the star. All the heat from the sun is created here, and astonishingly, the temperatures in the core of the sun reaches up to 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. Moving outward, the next part of the sun is called the radiative zone. This is easy to remember because the energy that the core produces radiates, hence the name, through this area. In other words, 
the energy is conveyed by photons here. In our sun, the radiative zone extends from the core outward to about 70% of the sun's radius. Next, on our way outward, is the convective zone. In the convective zone, heat and energy are carried outward along with matter in swirling flows called convection cells. This motion is similar to the roiling flows seen in a pot of boiling water. This zone is not dense enough to use radiative transfer of energy. Instead, it uses thermal convection zones. In other words, it boils. Energy is carried through thermal columns then to the surface of the sun. Here at the surface of the sun, the temperature drops to 9,800 degrees Fahrenheit, and this area is called the photosphere, the surface of the sun. The photosphere is the visible surface of the sun. The sun is a giant ball of plasma, so it doesn't have that distinct solid surface that we're used to here on Earth. Sunlight that is created by nuclear fusion in the sun's core gradually works its way outward, colliding over and over with atoms in the sun's interior. The sunlight finally reaches a level where the plasma is less dense and photons stop running into atoms and can finally escape into space. This level is what we see as the glowing surface of the sun. Next, we are going to talk about sunspots and solar flares. Sunspots are areas that appear dark on the surface of the sun. They appear dark because they are cooler than other parts of the sun's surface. Now, when I say cooler, I don't mean cold, they are still around 6,700 degrees Fahrenheit, so don't break out your parkas yet. This is due to magnetic flux that inhibits the convection that we were just talking about. On the other hand, solar flares are a sudden explosion of energy caused by tangling crossing or reorganizing of magnetic field lines near sunspots. Solar flares, if big enough, can cause electromagnetic disturbances on Earth as with radio frequency and power line transmissions. And the last part of the sun that we need to talk about today is the corona. The corona is the outermost layer of the sun's atmosphere. It consists of plasma. The sun's corona extends millions of kilometers into outer space. It is most easily seen during a total solar eclipse, but it is also observable with an instrument called a coronagraph. The corona reaches extremely high temperatures. However, the corona is very dim. Why is this? Well, the corona is about 10 million times less dense than the sun's surface. This low density makes the corona much less bright than the surface of the sun. And that is the sun. I am always amazed at how perfect God created our solar system and all the reactions that he put into place to make it so that we can live here on earth. This is the same God that made and loves you. That is a great God. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Please remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of the new episodes coming out. I had some questions about um, 
how often I'll be doing episodes and I will be doing a history and a science video every week through cycle two for my classical conversations students. As always, be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.